Hey there, race fans. It's race day. Top five of me, Frank Five. Talladega Super Speedway. She is the biggest. She's the baddest. She's the boldest. She's the fastest. And today, well, she was all that. She was fast. She was bold. She was bad at the end with some controversy over a finish. So many crashes. So much drama. So much that happened in Sweet Home Alabama where the skies today were certainly blue. And there was so much shake and bake out there today at Talladega. And a big controversial finish to this race. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what happened today in the wild card of the round of 12. Number one, Denny Hamlin, who's been so dominant this year, coming off a lackluster round of 16 performance, but with enough points, he was able to move his way into the round of 12 with no problem whatsoever. Today, he captured his seventh win of the season, tying with the 44th career win, tying him with Bill Elliott. He won today's Yellowwood 500 Talladega Super Speedway, winning it over Eric Jones, Ty Dillon, William Byron, and Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin was really good at the beginning of the race, the first 25 laps. He literally controlled the entire race up at the front. Then he decided to play a little bit of strategy of hanging in the back because he had enough points coming into today's race that he didn't really need to run for stage points. So too for Kevin Harvick. They both decided, we're going to hang out back, we're going to ride around, we're going to make our pit stops, we're going to wait for, those, wait for those guys up there to possibly wreck, and when the time's right, we're going to go straight to the front. Well, Denny Hamlin literally didn't start going until we had caution galore with a couple laps left in the race. We had a caution come out with about five to go, and then guys were kind of questionable on fuel, so they pitted and then moved Denny Hamlin up the running order. He had also taken some fuel towards the very end. He topped off. He kept passing guys and passing guys on multiple cautions and guys having to come in and make pit stops and have enough fuel to be good to go to the end and on the last restart of the race he was battling for the lead with Matt DiBenedetto and Denny Hamlin had fallen back but then picked his way up to the front and in the middle of turn three and four they were crashing right in front of him they were all side by side and all losing their car so much Denny Hamlin makes moves but he moves on the bottom of the racetrack below the apron below the double yellow line but he was able to come back up in the track and he was able to hold off and win today's race at Talladega the problem is there's a lot of controversy surrounding how NASA car ruled the finish because in three and four you saw guys forcing other guys down but making blocks and some of them forced them below the WL line. Denny Hamlin kind of made a pass below the WL line for three and four and the rule is you cannot advance your position when you go below the WL line but NASCAR deemed it he was trying to avoid an incident so no harm no foul and he ended up getting the win. And now a lot of people were not happy about this decision. I've read comments on social media. No one's happy about this decision. I mean, I'm not really happy about it either, but the rules are the rules. If they said he, you know, if he advances position, but he was trying to avoid a crash, then there's no harm to foul. I mean, the rules are complicated when it comes to this double yellow line. We've had this problem before many, many times. I mean, 12 years ago, Regan Smith apparently past Tony Stewart in the bottom, and it felt like he was going to win the race, but NASCAR deemed he passed below the double yellow line. Though some people thought, oh, it's legal in the last lap, there's no need to worry about it. Well, NASCAR said, uh-uh, tail on the longest line. They didn't penalize Denny Hamlin whatsoever, so he ends up getting the victory. Um, you know, I mean, he was smart all day long. He was kind of there at the right place at the right time at the end, but there's still going to be a lot of questions about that ruling. But he, he wins anyways. It's NASCAR's call, so Hamlin wins the race. Number two, Matt DiBenedetto. Oh, oh, God, I want to cry for this guy. He's so close to that first win. And in a season where he still doesn't know if he's going to be back with the Wood Brothers next year. There hasn't been a confirmation about whether he will be back with the team next year. DiBenedetto was so close to the win today. Seemingly finished second to Denny Hamlin at the line. But NASCAR sent DiBenedetto to the tail on the longest line because of that little, you know, bunch of, incidents that was happening up in the end of the race in three and four where Hamlin passed those guys below the apron to Benedetto forced William Byron below the WL line and if you force a guy down there you're subject to a black flag tail in the longest line and sadly that's what Matt Benedetto got but please Wood Brothers look at this race and last week's race at Vegas second place Matt Benedetto should stay with you for 2021 no disrespect to Austin Cindric he'll be in the cup series one day but the is the guy for this ride. He's been so close this year. Three second place finishes. I'm losing my voice talking about this. Matty D just deserves to be in a full-time cup ride next year with a good team, whether it be with the Wood Brothers or possibly raise interest for Hendrick Motorsports. Matt DiBenedetto should be in a full-time cup ride that's competitive 
next year, and it should be with the Wood Brothers. Or if he went to Hendrick, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But the Benedetto today showed how good he was. He ran up front all day, ran with the Penty guys. He was up there all day long battling for the lead. He had a fast car. Number three, the big one. <laughs> not one, not two, not three. I counted four big ones today, folks. I mean, this was crazy. The first big one happened towards the end of stage one, where Eric Almirola, who came in in a must-win situation, and Alex Bowman, who's the last guy above the cut line, both tangled on the back straightaway with three to go, ultimately knocking Almirola out of the race, forcing him in a must-win. He was not happy with Alex Bowman for what he did. Bowman got some damage. He was able to continue on. He actually got a top 15 out of today. And Kyle Busch was also part of the crash. That wasn't the first of... He had plenty more. He had a lot more crashes. Kyle Busch got himself involved in the crash. None of them scored any stage points, which hurts mostly Kyle Busch and Alex, uh, Eric Almirola because they're below the cut line. Kyle Busch was able to continue on. He had a left front tire go down, damaged the left front fender, and that car was completely destroyed. But yet he was still able to keep in the race until the very end, which I'll get to it. Uh, Brian Blaney was also part of it, looking to three-peat at Talladega. Unfortunately, he didn't get it done. Then the next big one happened with 12 to go in stage two, where Clint Boyer, who's in a must win or could possibly point his way in because it's Talladega, he got into the back of Jimmy Johnson in his last start at Talladega, getting him loose in the triable not once, but twice. The second time sent Jimmy around into Kurt Busch, into the ball, both of them. Kurt Busch got in his. Uh, off, the, off the ground a little bit, but luckily he didn't flip. Collected Cole Custer, collected Brad Keselowski, but not a lot of serious damage. Austin Dillon was involved in for you know, a pretty good amount of damage, but he was actually able to fix the car. And he had to go behind the wall, fix the radar, and he got both of his, lap backs, both of his laps back and was able to get back in the race. Uh, other cars were involved. Kyle Busch was part of it. <laughs> the, again, that first crash at the end of stage one wasn't the first crash Kyle Busch was part of because he had the tire issue and he was involved in this crash. A couple other guys were involved in it. Daniel Suarez was in it. And in his last NASCAR start today, Brendan Gaughan, Sally, was a part of that crash. And that sucks because I expected Brendan Gaughan, who was cruising at the back early in the race, to make a charge towards the end and shock everybody in his final NASCAR race that he could be a contender for the victory. Um, so those guys that knocked Kurt Busch out, but thankfully, based off of the win at Vegas, that helps Kurt Busch. Because if he didn't win last week and he came into the ra today's race and he had that crash, he'd be out right now. He would be out and Kyle Busch would be in. So... Last week's win shows how valuable it is to have a win when it comes to Talladega. So, good job, Kurt Busch. And then we had another wreck later in the race where we're coming to the white flag. It was like the first overtime, I believe it was. Chase Elliott tries to make a move to the inside of Joey Logano. He's able to get by. Logano gets shuffled back, and then he gets tapped from behind by Tyler Raddick, and they go into the wall collecting Kyle Busch, which pretty much ended his day. Martin Shrek Jr. and Kevin Harvick. Again, there was just so much action in those last couple of laps, and those guys were unfortunately a part of it. That officially knocked Kyle Busch out, and he now is in a must-win towards... Uh, next week at the Royal one, I don't think he's got a shot at all, but get to the bubble guys a little bit. And uh, then we had another crash in another overtime where Bubba Wallace got tipped from behind by Ryan Priest, but Bubba claimed I probably came down a little too early and a little too late, and I turned myself around and right into his buddy, Ryan Blaney. They were both involved and both of them out of the race, which is unfortunate because Bubba and Blaney, with all that damage to their cars that they had from earlier incidents, they had fast cars running up front all day long. Number four, the bubble driver. So going into the Roval, the four men out right now would be Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, Eric Amarola, and Austin Dillon. Did either of those guys have a good day today? <laughs> no. I mean, literally every playoff driver with the exception of Denny Hamlin, although if you throw in the controversial ending and how he probably shouldn't have won the race for passing below the yellow line, if you throw that in, every playoff guy had a pro at least a problem today. The, the, the four guys below, I mean, I think that's pretty much, I'll lead into next week's race at the end of the video, but... I think the way things are right now, those four drivers are going to be the four guys out. Kyle Busch, with the lack of practice and qualifying this year, he's not been able to have time to tune in the car before race day. He, unfortunately, was caught up in this crash today. He had a very good car early on. Clint Boyer had a good car. I mean, he caused that bit, that second big crash um, towards the end of stage two. It was his fault. I mean, he clearly jacked Jimmy Johnson up twice. That second time, did it in and sent off the big wreck. Eric Gomorola, I mean, I understand his frustration with Alex Bowman, but he had Joey Logano tucked up behind him, so what else are you going to do? Because Joey Logano will push everybody. Not enough. I'm saying it rudely, but I'm just saying. Logano was also part of that uh, third big wreck towards the end with uh, Kyle Busch, and as I mentioned, he was a part of the crash with Kyle Busch and Harvick and Shurex and other guys. Bowman was also part of it as well, but he was able to continue, and so was Austin Dillon. But yeah, and uh, Austin Dillon was caught up in Sony Cars. He went behind the wall to fix the radiator for two laps, 
And he was able to get back all those laps back with all the cautions we had late in the race. He was able to get a top 15 out of it. Incredible. The three team just doesn't give up. But sadly, I think this is the end of the road for these four guys when we go to the Roval next weekend. So um, they're, they're going to have to blow their pull rabbits. Uh, they're going to have to find a rabbit's foot to help them out. One car I will give a chance to possibly get in is Clint Boyer because he's a good road course racer and he can win road courses. So I give Boyer a better chance out of those four guys below the cutoff line to have a good chance to advance. And number five will be driver recap for Chase Elliott. A fifth place finish, a fast car all day long. A little bit of controversy surrounding Chase at the end, and I'll get to that in a moment. First of all, we were able to get a good day today with solid stage points. We finished sixth in stage one, and we were able to, or yeah, sixth in stage one, we were able to accumulate five playoff points. And then in the second stage, we were able to accumulate seven stage stage points so we accumulated 12 stage points all together today we ran up front all day long we had a fast car led a lot of laps worked with our teammates didn't want to see a lot of manufacturer work for the most part today as far as pit stops because we didn't have green flag pit stops that much today we had caution galore just come every direction every which way um but chase obviously was able to work with his teammates a lot and he was bringing up the bottom lane towards the end trying to challenge those forwards and ended up working it had all those cautions late and he was the leader and he was questionable on fuel to make it to the end and then another caution for bubba chase had to pit he did he put the fuel and he restarted 13 and drove his way all the way up towards the front and seemingly at the end he finished sixth but nascar ruled obviously the benedetto forced a competitor below the line and he was forced to turn along his line nascar saw that chase elliott made a pass below the wl line in the trial oval while trying to pass chris busher so nascar relegated him to a 22nd place finish but nask but the chase elliott team went straight to nascar saying uh-uh look at the video again we were forced down there by busher and you can see busher made a made a move down to block chase elliott towards the very end of the race and nascar said Okay, we see what you are saying, and we agree with your ruling, so we will make amends, and we will put Chase from 22nd back up to 5th place, which is where he would have been with De Benedetto being penalized for, I mean, for forcing guy below the line. I mean, there was a controversial end, but Chase Elliott went from a 22nd place finish and 27 points above the cut line to now a 5th place finish, 44 points above the cut line, going into one of our favorite tracks and rolling next weekend. All in all, it was a great day for the 19. Perfect execution, and thank you, NASCAR, for kind of helping their, us at the end and letting us have our spot back after you originally forced us to tail along this line. I make amends with you now for giving our spot back at a top five finish. So I'm very happy. He did a great job today. He had a fast car and he had a car that could have won this race. And I'm feeling so good about his chances next week. Got I mean, 44 points. Chase Elliott, yeah, he's locked in. He's going to be locking himself and he's going to lock himself in after he scores points, scores points in stage one next weekend. So next week is the last race in the round of 12, the Roval, one of the biggest wild cards other than Talladega. We're going to come into the this race and they're going to bail down to turn one tom's heartburn turn with no practice and qualifying whatsoever we don't know what to expect we do know what to expect though we expect denny hamlin and kevin harvey to be up front we expect chase elliott to dominate we expect Jurex to be up there and we expect this these guys below the cutoff line play a little strategy and basically go for it all just try to throw a hail mary out there this is going to be a wild race i will be attending this race charlotte is allowing some fans to be there i will be there this weekend with my uncle who's coming down with me and i can't wait to bring you live coverage there is a slight chance there may be some rain which means rain racing nascar cup series has never done it before we've seen it in the Xfinity series we've seen it in the truck series but we've never seen it in the cup series before but if it happens it's <laughs> it's just gonna be a wild race whatsoever so hopefully we have good weather for it and hopefully we will have a fun solid race and the playoff drama will be loved to the hype, which I'm pretty sure it will. So in the meantime, subscribe, like, congrats to Denny Hamlin, I think. I mean, because this is, again, a controversial finish. All in all, it was a great Talladega race. So much fun. Glad everybody was safe despite all the hard crashes. Exciting racing all day long. Talladega never disappoints. Hope you all have a wonderful week. And until then, have a great night.